We play. We fight. We conquer. Welcome to the Freak Show. Hi, I'm your host today, Bumpy McSquiggums, and we're going to be doing something very different. Very different from my normal stuff, as I honestly, truly believe that I am one of, if not the best person in the world at this game. Top 1% for sure. Uh, maybe the best with a controller versus with a keyboard? I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, maybe maybe there's some people out there that can crush me. I don't know. I, I've yet to see it. I, I think I'm really good at this game. And I should be because I am. Again, I'm giving you guys full disclosure here. Uh, I work for the Indie Brothers, who is the PR firm that handles Vertigo Gaming Incorporated. And I am the official streamer of Cook, Serve, Delicious 3 on their Steam store page. When there are events and things happening, I'm the one that's showcasing the game, sharing it with you all. So this is obviously my personal channel. This is something that I've wanted to do. I've asked on the channel, had a poll taken, all that stuff. And folks want to see what I can do, what I can bring to the table. So if you guys are still here and you're not like you run away in terror or whatever, uh, I know the game is coming out on the 11th of August onto Epic Games Store. It'll be free to play. Anybody can grab it, pick it up, and play it. I am going to give you guys not just to like a master class and show off and be like slash flex on them and all that stuff, but I am going to teach you guys how to play, uh, best practices, and what you can do to start off uh, like easiest foods and things of that nature to really you know get yourself going and then as you start to get better you can incorporate other foods and all sorts of stuff like that so this is going to teach you guys what you need to know to play the game efficiently effectively and maybe get a head start versus not having checked out this video and on top of all of that we're going to do this whole series and we're going to run through as far and as fast as we can so cook serve delicious three vertigo gaming incorporated October 14th, 2020 is when the game officially released. And yes, they do have a Cook Serve Forever game that is due out in 2023, the first quarter of 2023. So if you guys are eager and excited to see what's next, definitely go check that out. Again, none of this stuff needs to have happened. They're not paying me to do this. They didn't ask me to do this as something that I want to do because I have spent hundreds of hours playing this game. And I'm pretty good at it at this point. So just to give you guys a rough idea of what I've accomplished so far, and I haven't tried to push this any further in months at this point, but we go and we take a quick look. There's 387 levels in the game. 370 of those 387 levels. I have had perfect days all throughout. Literally gold medaled all the way to, there's two here that I have not been able to quite achieve. I think it's only two. Yep, only two here. And the Iron Cook Speedway, there's a few that I've not been able to conquer yet either. However, I don't honestly believe that there are a lot of other people who have or possibly anybody else who has. Now, there are people that may have the gold medals, but you can play this cooperatively. If I had somebody co-op that is at least close to my skill level, I can almost guarantee I'd be able to gold medal the entire game and move on beyond this. This is maybe, I think we showcased a couple of co-op. So there might be one or two medals that are co-opt medals, but there's stuff that I could have gotten on my own as well. So that all being said, we're not going that route. We are actually going to go and start a fresh game. So apologies for the big lengthy introduction, guys and gals. I just basically created this a few minutes ago, and we're going to dive in and begin. So... Uh, go in, change up whatever visual displays, uh, display settings, your audio, get the game sounding and looking good for you all, then go to start new day. And we're going to see the story so far. This follows on from Cook, Serve, Delicious 1 and Cook, Serve, Delicious 2. There is sort of a storyline that continuates throughout all of that. And, well, here you go. Enjoy. The year is 2041 and the United States is reeling from war. But that hasn't stopped business from booming. Welcome to Tasteville recently opened its 1,000th restaurant. Chili Bowl bought a small island in the Pacific. And Max Wieners continues to be in and out of various ventures. And as for Cook, Serve, Delicious, well, it continues to be regarded as the finest restaurant in the world. Until it was destroyed 20 minutes ago.
Easy on the brakes, Whisk. Sorry, Cleaver. This old hunk of junk needs some love and care. Jeez. Look at this place. Do you think anyone made it? Only one way to find out. Hey, Cleaver! I think I found a survivor! Give me a hand! On my way! All right. One, two, three, lift! Holy crap, is that the chef from Cook Serve Delicious? I'm such a big fan. Chef, I've got some good news and some bad news. Your vitals look fine, just some minor scrapes and brain hemorrhaging, but your restaurant is... It's gone. I'm... I'm sorry. Cleaver! Um, a word with you? In private? What? What if we give Chef our truck and offer to help? You could be a guardian, and I could be the driver. Well, it would be nice to work with living people for a change. All right, then. It's settled. Okay, well, I didn't like... Hey, Chef! To... We have an idea! There's the iconic uh, intro song that you guys are waiting for. Vanna Mahoney as Cleaver and Negorix as Whisk. Great voice talent. They did really, really good. And one year later, we're about to dive in and begin our journey. So... I'm you going to picking? start it. I'd, I'd love to sit there on the, uh, the intro screen, let all the music play and stuff. They do have a tutorial, so if you guys are afraid and you're diving in for the first time, uh, don't worry. They have a tutorial. They explain how things work. I will also go through and explain stuff. I will give you guys as much information, as many tips and hints as I can to get you guys prepared and ready for what's to come. That being said, I do recommend you try the variety of different control schemes that are out there. And... If you end up liking the game and you want to play it and you want to get better at it, I would suggest that, you know, if you decide to go down that route, you decide you do want to play more, I would suggest trying each different control scheme for a few hours. Don't just do it like, oh, I tried it three times, I hated it. Uh, just uh, quickly go back. When I start, this is one of the games I was the absolute worst at out of every game I've ever played. I was horrible at this game. In fact, I think there's even a video somewhere on the channel where I was just the worst. And over, you know, many hours, many hundreds of hours of playing and showcasing and sharing the game, I've gotten actually quite good. But I started off the keyboard, as that was what everyone told me I should be doing. And I liked it. I uh, wasn't great at it. Uh, and this is coming from someone who used to type flawlessly at like 185 words a minute. Like, I was incredible back in the day. Nowhere near that at this point, but I was really, really good at typing. I uh, just didn't didn't really fully resonate with me. It was okay. It was fine. Uh, then I switched to the controller because we had to do some sort of capturing of uh, gameplay with the controller prompts and everything else. And I hated it. It was very difficult. But by the time I got done doing all that, I was like, man, I'm actually about the same skill level with the keyboard as I was with the controller. So I stuck with the controller a little bit longer and then it clicked. And when it clicked, you know, the whole world opened up to me. And it took, you know, like six, seven hours for me to really lock into the controller. And that's where we're at now. So like I said, Try the controller, try the keyboard, try the mouse, whatever works for you. Mouse is probably the worst option, but whatever works for you, go that route, play around with it, try the different things, see what works, give it several hours, give it a shot. That being said, you can also change the buttons. There's a variety of different button options there as far as uh, what's displayed. I am using a PlayStation 5 controller. It is showing PlayStation buttons. If you have an Xbox controller, you can set it to Xbox buttons. Anyway. All that out of the way, guys and gals, let's get into it here. Welcome, Chef. Before we get on to our first stop, let's make some food in this food truck. All right, press left or right up top. You see the little triangle moving. Uh, left or right to the holding station to highlight it, and then press the triangle to select it. Today's menu board tells us how many orders of each food people want at the next stop. Let's start prepping the food. So you see the school bus yellow 12 there. That means there's 12 foods, or pretzels in this case, that need to be prepped. So 12 of that food, which again are pretzels, need to be done in order for us to fulfill the stop. So we hit triangle and we open this up. Now it says let's start prepping some foods. Now to do this, you then hold down L2 or left trigger if you're using an Xbox controller. 
and then there's going to be other prompts. It will go with the keyboard and mouse, or the keyboard. It, you can click on stuff with the mouse. Anyway, it'll go with the keyboard if you use the keyboard as the initial thing. But once you get into it, you can't change. You can't go like, all right, I don't like this. I'm going to switch over to the keyboard. It won't let you do that. So you hold down L2, and then you press the corresponding button. I can bring the mouse onto the screen. So one of the things I really like about the controller, what makes it much easier for me than a lot of the other ones that you get with the keyboard and stuff, is it's always going to be triangle, square, circle, X. Triangle, square, circle, X. This is with L2 on the left side, and if it's with R2, it'll be on the right side, and it'll always be triangle, square, circle, X. It's always in that order. It doesn't matter what the food items are. And the fact that it is always the same is what really made me start enjoying and resonating with, you know, the control scheme. It was like, man, this is this is easy. I don't need to know, like, pretzels are P, but German pretzels are G, but regular pretzels are PR, and, you know, like, all these other little things. They don't always, just like, it's not just the first letter. You might have, like, butter beans and buffalo wings or something. And it wouldn't just be BBB. It'd be, like, B... E and then W, and you're like, what? So anyway, we'll, we'll get into all that. So let's go here, and we got it. We, we hit the triangle, and now it shows you this is the food prep recipe that we need to prepare. The, its list of ingredients is down at the bottom. It's what you need to make the order perfect. They need German pretzels here. So we hold down L2, and we hit the square button, give them German pretzels. We let go of L2, and we hit X, or cross, or we want to call it to cook. So place the ingredients that are needed by the recipe by holding down L2, hitting the corresponding button. Once you're done, let go of L2, press X to cook. Okay, order's cooking once it's finished. All right, so go to the other holding stations. And there we go. So we only needed 12, right? Now we go and we look here. It says 12, right, is needed, but it's in white, meaning that through all the stuff that's already cooked or all the stuff that is currently cooking, we have made that goal. If it's a school bus yellow that it was before, it means that we still need to cook more. We are arriving at the next stop. You'll need to serve customers their hot pretzels as soon as they come in. I'll make some additional pretzels, because why not? Uh, the co-op works very good in this game. It works incredibly well. You Essentially, it's local co-op, but they do have Steam's remote play together as an option. So you can have anyone join you anywhere in the world, as long as they have a controller, that they can plug in. So press up and down to highlight a prep station, and then press the square button to serve. So you see on the left, up and down, you see the square. So ordinarily, if you were on the keyboard, for instance, you can just press one through seven. Uh, otherwise, that's one of the few things that's actually maybe slightly quicker than having to go through all this. But regardless, square, 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 boom, done. Super quick, super Solid. easy. But this game has something specific that makes that not that important. You don't often go through and hit square on all these various different foods. And you'll see here why in a minute. Some orders are special orders that must be made individually instead of in a batch in a holding station. Select the order when it comes into the prep station. All right, up and down, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna select it. So we hit square on the left on this ice cream thing. We're gonna hit L2, we're gonna hit the waffle B, and we're gonna hit close. And then we're gonna go ahead and cook it. You have completed the order, and it's in the waffle iron. Wait until the order is finished cooking. When it starts to flash, we need to pull it out of the iron. So this is something that's not an quote-unquote auto-serve food. So you see that clock that's going around? That sound always means that it's done cooking. We have to get back up there before it burns. You see it's slowly ticking away, getting almost back up to the 12 o'clock position. It's going to start giving us danger warnings here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go in there. And it's going to say... Follow the recipe below to turn the pages. Press circle without holding down L2 or R2. If it has a two in it, that means it requires two of that ingredient. This has chocolate two, right? Right down here. So right now, on this screen that we're on right now, it shows dip cone. Uh, we're not going to dip the cone in chocolate, so that's not part of the recipe down here. So we're actually gonna leave this area and go to the next one. So, on top, or so we'll do that. So this this is considered the blue tab here. This is like the fuchsia, the pink. I don't know whatever. We'll, we'll say fuchsia. This is that that tab right here. So you'll notice that these are all left ingredients. These are all right ingredients. Uh, don't worry about that. Uh, right here, it's showing you it's the 
fuchsia tab and it's a left ingredient. Chocolate is on the left side, it's the second one. So we hold down L2, it's square, we're gonna plop down two squares, we're gonna let go and we're going to hit serve. Great job, let's bake a few more batches of pretzels in the holding station before the next stop. We are nearing the next stop. All right, and that should be enough, and it is. So that's done, it's already plated, it's ready to be served at any point. And yeah, you can call Whisk and Cleaver to help serve orders. Flick the right analog stick in any direction to get them to auto serve all orders that are ready. Don't press the analog stick into the controller, just push, push it in any direction. So you'll see, I'm gonna wait until the pretzels are done here. So they're done now. If I hit the right analog stick, say to the right, or to the left, or up or down, it's going to do that. All right, now they're telling us to, we're, we're kind of weapons free at this point. We need to make pretzels and we need to deal with any of the special orders that are coming in. So we are going to do that. Waffle. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna waffle and close. Now there is a argument to be made that you should try to space these out a little bit. So you don't start freaking out when everything comes together. This has the dip cone. It's got chocolate, and then on the right, it's got Rocky Road. I'm gonna do the cone there. All right, dip the cone again. Double mint chocolate on the left. Okay, and we're gonna go down here. We're gonna do that. And this does not have the dipped cone. We switch over, we got chocolate and the mint chocolate. And then we're done. Once again, down here, we're going back up top. Dip the cone, double chocolate. And down here, we're doing that. And that's gonna be the last two orders coming in. So we're gonna go ahead, it's dip the cone, butter pecan. Now, keep in mind, not everyone has dipped cones, right? So that was something that I was actually struggling with. This one does not have the dip cone. So you do not use this. You switch immediately over to the two ingredients it needs, which are mint chocolate and a butter pecan. You let go, you serve, it's good. Now we served those, we're gonna go take a look. We need 14 more than what we already have. So classic, German, uh, classic and German. All right, now we can take a look again and we have 14 needed, we're cooking 16. Once they're all done, we're going to be done. Everything's gonna be great, it's gonna be glorious, it's gonna be sweet, sweet, nice styles with a Z, as they say. And with that, our very first day is complete. Gold medal, super easy, simple. Hopefully that all made sense. And we get a little confetti raining down, we get balloons, and then we get a speech from Whisker Cleaver. Wow. That's pretty darn impressive. And then they give us a summary and a breakdown of what we managed to do. We, are, we served 61 people. They were a combination of, I have no idea. Oh, okay, it tells us now. A combination of 54 pretzels and seven of the ice cream cones. The zero point food items, the pretzels, uh, only worth a dollar, whereas the ice cream cones, the seven of them that we did serve, were worth $3. We got a total of $75. The $75 then exchanges into 20cc crumb coin. That's our cryptocurrency and no, it's it's all parody. It's haha -ha funny stuff. They're not really into, you know, just, just calm down. It's okay. It's not. They're not real cryptocurrency. It's, it's, a, it's a joke. It's okay. Uh, anyway, um, so however much money you make directly translates into how much you can exchange for the crumb coin, which you can use to purchase new foods. You can use it to purchase customizations and upgrades for your food truck. And I think those are the two things you really use it for. And then you also get experience based on how much money you make. In this case, uh, it looks like it needs $100 or 100 experience to get us to our next level. We got 75, so we're at 75% of the level. Kind of makes sense, it all tracks. So that is the very first and really the only true tutorial. All the stuff beyond this are going to have in the game where you're actually making the food and everything else, there's gonna be no tutorial, tooltips, or anything like that. However, when we go in to start choosing our menu and all that stuff, there are going to be some tooltips and stuff. So there's still a little bit more tutorialization, but for the most part, we're here. This episode might run a little long, guys and gals, just so you know. All right, we're gonna go here. Before we start the day, we need to fill out today's menu. You've analyzed our route and uh, potential customers to select the best foods for the job. Select any slot to get started. All right, so as we go through each and all of the different 
places that we go are going to have like various different like words associated with it. In this case, simply solid zero. That means that anything that is a zero food uh, ranked item is the only thing you're going to be able to use for this menu. There's going to be a bunch of stuff like Fiesta, bring your own barbecue, uh, just the bees, please. Like all these various different things that will actually kind of affect and change what your menu is going to be. So you're not always going to be able to serve the same three items. So there will be a choice of items you can serve from, and you have to make up your menu based on what is available per stop or per route day. I don't know what you want to call it, per day, I guess. Because there's three stops in this particular day, right? So we have a bunch of zero point menu items here. I'm going to go with the deconfit, the ed soup, duck confit, egg drop soup, and. I mm -hmm. ah, glazed donut. Why not? Budokim chi, we'll do the crab legs and the jerk chicken. All right, all systems are a go. Select begin day to begin your day. Now, there's a very important menu option that needs to be turned on, but I'll show you guys in the next one. It's not important right now, but moving forward, it's important. I feel personally it should always be on. I don't know why it's even an option, but I'll, I'll let you guys decide, and I'll show you guys what that is after we finish the stop. All right, let's get moving. So you guys kind of have a rough idea what's going on, and we're just going to go. As soon as we start, we go up top, and we immediately start putting our food into place. I am a very big proponent of just prepping extra food if, when, and where I can. I don't even really bother to look to see if I need the extra stuff. I just do it. And in this particular case, up here, I went with two of the duck confit, one for the egg soup, or the egg drop soup, and one for the donuts. The donuts probably aren't going to make it because they, they go bad really quickly, so we may have to change those out. All right, now on the left-hand side, I have time because I've done this a lot. I'm relaxing, I'm taking my time. We see the crab legs, we see some jerk chicken coming in. We go check out the crab legs. Boom, boom, two piece, it's ready to go. Jerk chicken's three piece, it's ready to go. And then you got kimchi, onion shoots, pork. Now, zero point menu items, I think every single one of them, there is no variation. There are no variants in the food. It is always exactly what it shows. All right, so whenever food gets done, like it was just there, you heard the be doop, be doop as the things were getting done. It immediately can be auto-served, even though you're not at the stop, to quote unquote plate them at that point. So like right now, we're at a stop. So when I hit this, that means it's going to directly go to the person. But if we're not at the stop I yet, knew you could do it. we'd amazing. have to start over. So if you want to throw out whatever's up top and redo something, I'm going to do double egg, uh, egg drop soup here. What you can do is double tap the triangle button on top of it, and it'll throw it out. So I just basically threw everything that ready we had away, and I redid the food just so we we're ready. All right, over here, we're going to go through and do this. Now, one thing I like to do whenever I'm done preparing a food and it's cooking, I always move down one so I don't ever accidentally hit the square button when I don't mean to and serve the food before it's done cooking. If you serve it before it's done cooking, you don't get a perfect day. So as you see there, they're all done. I'm going to hit that right analog stick in any direction and it's all going to get served. All right, we're going to go here with one more duck confit and actually we need two. The duck confit is the longest thing to make. Don't, this, the glazed donuts will not last. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna redo those. They should last now. And we're just breezing through. So you see, I finish and I move down one. I finish, I move down one. I finish, I move down one. That's that's how I do it, just to make sure I don't ever accidentally go. So you see, you heard the doo doo, you can hear it again right now. And if I just hit the right analog stick, it plates those. Those are done. I can do whatever I want on these, and it can't do anything because they're not. They're not able to be served yet, and they're already cooked. So you don't have to, with auto serve, go back and actually plate each individual thing or serve each individual thing. You just use the auto serve, hit the right analog stick in whatever direction, and it's good to go. Now that I know everything's cooked, I move up and away from all the food that's still cooking, so I don't accidentally chef. make a mistake and hit it, and we're good to go. So, like, if I actually start hitting buttons here that I don't mean to hit. Like I said, it's just good to go. All right, so the Ed soup is bad or is gone. We gotta get some more donuts before they go away, and we need one more Ed soup on top of it. 
And unfortunately, we're just going to have to sit here and wait it out. Just waiting, waiting. 11 to go. You see in the top right corner. How, that'll tell us the distance between the stop we're on and the... Or where we're at and the stop that we're coming up to. It also tells you how many people you have to serve and how many are left. But there you go. Easy gold medal. Kind of best practices there. But we're going to get into kind of more menu best practices here in a minute. Oh, wow, chef. I, I'm speechless. I'm not. I could talk forever about how great of a job you did, Please chef. Please do. Please don't. To be clear, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a big... Uh, I'm a big fan of, of Whisk, so I'm hashtag Team Whisk. You know, you guys can be support and pleader if you want. Hashtag Team Whisk all the way. Just saying. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna come out of that now. I'm gonna go enter the Konami code, and I'm gonna get a special motivational speech from Cleaver. Heard the ding, you know it worked. All right, we're gonna come back here. We're gonna go to A, and we're gonna go down to the three point menu. And it says right there, three point menu, simply solid zero, simply solids one. And then they're going to teach you about point requirements on your menu. So there's always a standard mode and a chill mode. I haven't talked about this yet. Say you're really struggling. You like the game, you wanna play it. You can't handle the stress of all this speed coming through. You're just not used to it yet. Controls are still a little awkward or uncomfortable for you. You just, you haven't quite nailed it down yet. You can always go into chill mode and chill modes will give you, it'll say, Chill mode turns on infinite patience for customers so you can focus on getting the orders correct. Even if you're doing it a little bit slower or a lot slower, that way you get used to doing the correct orders. And then from that, you can start getting faster at it. And then you can eventually translate it back to standard mode where you can get those gold medals. And it also turns off food truck attacks. You can only earn up to a silver medal in this mode, but that will allow you to progress through most of the game. There'll be a few that are locked behind, you know, needing gold medals to get there. But for the most part, you're able to go through probably like 90% of the game or more. So good times. And there are times I, I, I've used chill mode a few times because I couldn't do it otherwise. But uh, I, I think I maybe have even evolved beyond needing that at all at this point. Uh, except for like the last, some of the iron chef uh, or iron cook uh, levels, those still chill mode just to get the end of, the, you know, to the end of the game. Anyway, regardless, do what you need to do. Feel it out, learn, practice, do whatever you got to do. Chill mode, it's not, nothing shameful about it. Use it to your, you know, fullest ability. All right, now, super important thing. We'll see what they say here, and then I will show you the most important option you need to turn on in this game. So, this menu has a three-point requirement. We'll need to purchase some higher tier level foods. Buy and place at least three tier one foods on your menu. The number on the top right of each food indicates its tier or difficulty. Okay, so we're going to go here and I'm going to use I'm going to use the boiled eggs, biscuits and gravy and the brisket slices as my uh, examples, I guess you could say. So if you're taking a look right now and you're looking at biscuits and gravy, it has a shopping cart means we need to purchase it. There's a one. And then there's a red HS, you know, and I, I keep forgetting to ask. I have no idea what the red HS means. I apologize. I don't know. Versus the yellow, I really don't know. Maybe it's a specific type of food you need. I, I'm not sure. So I don't actually have any idea what those are. I keep forgetting to ask. And, and I've literally forgotten to ask for like a year now. So shame on me. I'll, I'll hopefully get the info at some point. Anyway, so the only things you see are we need to buy it. It's a one point uh, menu item. And it's a holding station food. Same thing here, except it's yellow. And the same thing here that's red. So you know what? Let's take the boiled eggs out of the equation. Let's just say red to red. So these two are exactly the same according to what we see right now. The brisket slices and the biscuits and gravy, exactly identical from the information we have before us. We back out. We go over here to this little cog, if you will. Right up here. And... We go down to this option, view servings slash auto serve. This does not change gameplay at all. It literally shows you information on the menu that is vitally important. Turn this on. I don't know who told me this originally when I was streaming. I didn't know about this for months. Somebody told me about it and it is literally a game changer. So we go back again, no gameplay changes whatsoever. We go back here, we scroll down. I don't know why it's not defaulted on. 
That's 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 a sticking point with me. I, I've mentioned it a dozen times. Doesn't seem to change. It is what it is. All right, we'll look at biscuits and gravy now versus the brisket slices. Everything looks the same, except there's a six on the left for biscuits and gravy. And then there's an 18, which is higher than six. Eh, eh, simple math. On the brisket slices. And it has this weird little Starbucks looking thing with whisker cleaver's head in it. So what does that mean? That means that there are six servings of biscuits and gravy versus 18 of the brisket slices and that the biscuits and gravy are not an auto serve food. Anything with this little Starbucks head icon of whisker cleaver, you know, the green with the white, that means it's an auto serve food. Fried fish, ham slices, griddled eggs, frozen bananas. These are all auto serve food. The jalebi, nope. The sopapillas, nope. And I'm going to butcher so many names of foods. I apologize in advance. Super important to turn that on. Super, like, it is so important. Please, please, please turn on that option. I don't know why it's even an option or why it's off, but it needs to be on. Turn it on. Every time you start a new game, not every, like, if you if you started the new game, you go through the tutorial, you have to turn it on. If you're coming back to the game and continuing where you left off, it's already on once, it's going to stay on. So, if you guys are wondering what, like, the easiest menu to choose from, like, how to build the easiest menu when you're starting out, that'll give you the least trouble and the most bang for your buck, and kind of, these are foods that will carry you through. Go ahead, get any of the meat slices. So, brisket, ham, there's turkey, and then... There is one more, the sausage slices, but with the sausage slices, there's a variant that's either one or the other, whether it's black sausages or blood sausages or something, or regular sausages. So you'll have to look at that. The others are all just, just go through and do things, all right? So those three meat slices, they're all 18s, they're all auto-serve, they're great. They're really, really good at, up top. Frozen bananas. Incredible uh, one as well. It's, it's a nine piece, so not quite as good, but it's still really, really good. All right. And then over here, ones that I particularly like, and this might not be the same for you guys. I really like this octopus thing. I have no idea how to pronounce it. It's fine. I'm not even going to try. It's right there. I want to try, but I'm not going to. Um, yeah, purchase that. That's, that's really easy. The sausage and sauerkraut, it's a little slower to cook, but it's exactly the same if you're using a controller. Same exact uh, menu. And then if you want to add one more to it, the Bananas Foster's there. And essentially, this is going to be one of, if not the easiest menu you can do that doesn't include zero-point menu items. And it might even be easier than ones that do include zero-point menu items. So we're going to dive in here, and we're going to do this one. So I think after this, I can probably break off this first episode and you guys will have a pretty good idea of what you're doing moving forward i will follow this up with obviously more episodes and we're gonna play through we're gonna get as far as i can um with whatever skills i can bring to the table so hopefully you guys are on board for that like i said this is something i uh, had put a poll on the channel months back and i've just been looking for the right time all right chef this is a great time show to me what it. you got so this is kind of all you need to know. So we just go up top, we throw the brisket in, we throw the ham slices in, the turkey slices. We're already done up top. We see everything's done here. Looks like the turkey's gonna get hit the hardest and we're ready to go. Like we are literally waiting at this point. We breeze through the top, it's looking solid. The octopus comes in, just go ahead and do that and it's done. And then you notice again, immediately after I'm up there, I move down. Yeah, this is for a controller only thing. If you're on the keyboard and mouse, you don't have to move because you, you hit buttons to open things, so it's not the same. For the controller, I highly recommend, after you're done cooking it, get it ingrained in your brain to move downward. That way you can hit square all you want, and you never accidentally go into something that's cooking. Uh, incredible soundtrack. I may have to adjust the sound. It sounds a little bit loud compared to where I think it should be while we're uh, doing this. So I may be a little bit quiet. We'll see. Uh, but we'll, we'll play around with the sound and we'll see how it goes as we go through. All right, so all those are done. You'll see how it's starting to tick down. If we don't get it by the time it hits the left, 
That means we're going to fail and get bad, angry customers. No, customers aren't bad. They're just going to be angry because their food went bye-bye. Now we're going to get through all the meat. And like I said, I'm a big proponent of going through and doing extras and like refreshing things up top. We used two brisket. I'm not going to refresh that. We have a full turkey there. I'm not going to refresh that either. Uh, I'm going to take a look here. Do we need another turkey? No, we, we do. We do need another turkey. We're going to use 14. And then we're going to have to get another brisket on this next one. All right. We're going to breeze through this. Ready? We're nearly there. I'm ready. And you can see in the top right, well, it says we're arriving now. Uh, we'll, we'll point that out when we do. So we're arriving. There's a little bit of time while we're arriving where it's sticking down. So essentially, we're going to breeze through this. We're done with it. Oh, it said we were going to have 14 left. My bad. I'm going to refresh in these. There's only three stops. We just finished stop two of three. Now we're taking a look at the top right. We're departing. And we're 2.2 miles away from our next stop. So we just go ahead and we go. Now, if you guys don't like the traffic sounds, the pew, pew, or you don't particularly like the police sirens or any of that stuff, that is all mutable inside the options menu. So again, set the game up the way you want to set it up. If it's too distracting or like bugs you or freaks you out or whatever, by all means, turn it off. I'm fine with it. I'm sorry if it bothers anyone else. But yeah, like I said, it's got a lot of little options there to make your life easier. Like I, I, I'm just impressed that it actually has PlayStation and Xbox and so on and so forth buttons. Whereas a lot of games do not have that as an option. So kudos and shout out to the developers for that. All right. And there we have it. Basically, I'm just going to hold the right analog stick and Making everything's going to get served. Uh, we have two remaining. It says in the top right, we can see there's two things that are cooking right now. Just got to wait for those to get done. One is done and the other is on its way. And in three, two, one. There it is. So that's pretty much all you need to know. Now let's have our motivational speech from the Konami code from Cleaver here. And uh, then we'll call it. Let's go! Manifest your truth! Achieve them! Think it in your mind and it will be! Cleaver. Now don't worry, that will never come up unless you enter the Konami code on the main menu using the keyboard. If you are, uh, that freaked you out, you don't have to worry about that being one of the voice lines coming. I think it's hilarious. I think it's great that they did something like that. They had fun with it. And I like sharing that. I think that's pretty cool. There's a lot more into this game, guys and gals. You've unlocked the new uh, new trinket to decorate with. Find it in the customized truck menu. We're not going to go into customizing our food truck right now. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff. Uh, each and every one of the foods has what I like to call a totally accurate. There's definitely air quotes there. Uh, history behind the foods and some clever and witty writing there uh one of my favorites is pork loin so i will probably throw that up at some point and let you guys see what i'm talking about and just again all of the foods have some sort of witty clever writing that goes with it so hopefully you guys enjoyed this kind of uh you know handholdy you know bring you through the first uh, three stages of the game kind of going alongside the tutorial and emphasizing a few extra points, giving you guys some, some tips on really good and easy foods to use. And of course, the very, very important option that you must 100% turn on when you play the game because it makes your food selection choices so much easier. Knowing how many servings you have and whether or not it's auto-serve is paramount to your success. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks uh, the, to the developers for, you know, not only hooking me up with the code for this, but allowing me to be their official streamer on the Steam store page for them. That's great. And it's, it's just really cool. So I've struggled with this game. I've learned it. I've more or less conquered it. I've gotten really, really incredibly good at it. And I hope you guys enjoy the ride with me. And hopefully you guys pick it up yourselves. Whether you pick it up on, I believe it's on Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, like on everything. Uh, whether you do it through console or you grab it on PC, whether you grab it on Steam or you pick it up on Epic on the 11th of August. So just a few days. Uh, check it out. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of craziness and madness that goes on. 
and uh, you know, it might inspire you to cook some food too. It's inspired me. I've already made two or three things from this. I made a croque monsieur, and I made a Japanese crepe, and I'm sure there's something else that I'm not remembering, but I've made at least those two things that I know for certain, and they turned out pretty good. So, and it's kind of sparked me getting a little more interested in food in general. So, I'm looking forward to Cook Serve Forever. I have had tons of fun doing Cook Serve Delicious 3. Hope you guys are on board for this ride. This is a very long outro. I'm going to cut it short. We're not going to have any more long intros or outros coming up. So if you guys just like, oh, I won't show. I will. I will in all the future episodes. I promise. I promise it won't be so bad. Anyway, thank you so much for stopping by The Freak Show. I'll have all the relevant links as to where to get the game, information on the developer, and all that stuff down below in the description of the video. Just like always, like, subscribe, share. You guys know the YouTube algorithm thing. And until the next episode, I have been your host, your guide. You're Svengali, if you will. Bumpy McSquiggums. Thanks again. We play, we fight, we conquer.